Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for being here and to, to listen to our presentation about the principles and concepts of uh, safety and quality measurement in H2 production. Um, so what are we talking about? So we will give you a short introduction about uh, PSG and also uh, about SPH. We will then talk about the importance of process analytics in green uh, hydrogen generation and uh, hydrogen purification applications. After this, uh, we will go through the uh, challenges and solutions for safe measurement of hydrogen uh, generation, which is quite a big topic, and also the presentation from Traeger before was uh, considering this topic. Then we will go forward for the challenges and solutions for the quality measurement of pure hydrogen and pure oxygen, which is quite... It, it's a pure gas, but it's not that easy to measure. And then we will give you a short outlook about um, the, the things that we see uh, for safety measurement and quality measurement in hydrogen applications. So just very short, a short introduction about PSG. PSG is a mid-sized company which is very close to Frankfurt. Um, we have some specialties, uh, so we do gas sampling, gas transport with our heated sample gas lines, gas conditioning, and of course we do some system integration projects and um, then we have a good uh, kind of knowledge for exactly those applications for the hydrogen generation and the hydrogen purity measurements. Yeah, um, first Steve will give you some insights about, let's say, the importance of process analytics in general about the hydrogen generation and purification. So Steve, maybe it's up to you. Thorsten, thanks for the invitation to speak today. I've been working with hydrogen, I imagine, a lot longer than most of the people listening to me today. My first exposure to hydrogen was 33 years ago. I'm actually 55 years old. For 15 years, I managed two electrolyzer product ranges at Linda Gas, which was my former employer. And uh, recently, I've become an independent consultant. And just as an example, a couple of years ago, I specified two gigawatts worth of electrolyzer capacity for projects in Asia. So I spend my whole life working with hydrogen. And Lindy, as a big corporate company with an absolute strong, strong, strong focus on safety, safety, and safety, my blood flows around with a safety mentality. So it's a pleasure to be here today to share some of my passion about safety and hydrogen with you. And I hope that what we're sharing with you today can help to make your hydrogen projects and your hydrogen electrolyzers safer. That's really my objective for being here today. Which button do I press? Is it this green one? I'm sure you've all recognized the whole electrolyzer dynamic is absolutely alive. I've got 120 electrolyzer producers, OEMs, stack builders like Schaeffler, whose stack you're looking at behind you over there. I've got 120 of these companies on my database. Now, some of them have been around for a long time and really know what they're doing and understand the risks of dealing with hydrogen. Others are startups, and they're really just learning about electrolysis and electrochemistry, and they're only just beginning to open up their eyes and understand that they need to manage safety risks as well. So there's a huge amount for people to take in. And if you're developing a new electrolyzer, Probably 12th on your priority list is thinking about safety. You're so much focused on efficiency and capital cost and other things. But please, I really want people to move that safety topic up to the top of their agenda also. There are two main reasons for measuring um, hydrogen and other gases on the electrolyzer. The first, as I've been mentioning all along, is operational and safety and process control. We want to make sure that the, oper the operation of this electrolyzer is safe. The second reason is product quality control. Ultimately, we're making this hydrogen for somebody else or for a particular application, and we must be spot on sure that the purity that we deliver conforms to the specification that we need to sell. So it's about operability and safety on the one hand, and about product quality and specification management on the other. This slide is looking at the operational aspects of it. This is three traces of um, the hydrogen concentration in the oxygen on an alkaline electrolyzer. Now, maybe you thought that the electrolyzer effectively produced hydrogen over here and oxygen over here, and that the gases never mixed across the, the, the membrane or the diaphragm. Here's the bad news. They do. 
Unfortunately, we do get hydrogen coming into the oxygen and we get oxygen coming into the hydrogen. Neither gas stream is pure. And as we've been hearing from um, Draeger just now, explosive gas mixtures, that's what we want to avoid. And as soon as that hydrogen level in the oxygen climbs above 4%, boom, we've got an explosive gas mixture. So at half of that level, it's called 50% of the LEL, 50% of the lower explosive limit, 2% of hydrogen. We tend to have a trip on the electrolyzer. And a trip means this electrolyzer is going to stop. Now remember, we bought this electrolyzer to run. We want this thing to run. And if it's a trip, it better well be for the right reasons. We better well make sure that our measurements are accurate so that we don't just trip for fun three times a week because the sensor or the analyzer was feeling like it. If this thing's going to trip, it has to be for the right reason. Yep. And again, if I do genuinely have a lot of hydrogen in my oxygen, we better well trip. Yeah, because otherwise, oof, the noise, you'd be hearing it from here to Munich. So here we go. Why do I end up getting hydrogen in my oxygen? Why does this membrane not keep these two gases separate? There are three main reasons. Sometimes the membrane gets perforated. There's a hole in it, so the gases convect across the membrane. Secondly, the hydrogen ions, they diffuse across the membrane. You don't want them to, but they do. Thirdly, have a look at the electrolyte recirculation. I've got electrolyte coming back from the hydrogen side, where there's hydrogen gas dissolved in the electrolyte, and from the oxygen side, where there's oxygen gas dissolved in the electrolyte, and I mix them together. So effectively, the circulation of the electrolyte brings dissolved hydrogen and dissolved oxygen in contact together. So it is inevitable that we get this crossover. A question for you, anybody, anybody listening. Where's the roof? Can anybody see or where's the roof of that building? The gentleman here says there is no roof. Does anybody know where the roof is? It's in a thousand million little pieces on the floor here. Yeah, you see, this is where the roof is. It's on the floor. Now, what do you think might have happened? Boom! Is what happened about 24 hours before this photograph was taken. This is Ilford in Essex in the United Kingdom. This was a real, live, pressurized alkaline electrolyzer explosion. Boom! It was actually louder than I can say that. This was the accident investigation report. What was the problem? Oxygen carry, sorry, hydrogen carryover into the oxygen due to uh, corrosion and perforations. Why didn't they pick this up three years ago? Look at the corrosion here. Do you think that happened overnight? No. This is an ongoing long-term problem. Why did they not pick it up three years ago and avoid this catastrophic explosion which killed a man? Well, listen. If you do the right things and listen to Torsten in a moment, I'm sure you'll be able to solve the problem and avoid it for yourselves. Coming across to PEM very, very quickly, my time is running out, but coming across to PEM, that's a PEM profile, very, very similar in process to the alkaline systems that we looked at a moment ago. Oh, but the big difference that we can do on PEM systems is that we can incorporate a platinum recombination layer into the membrane electrode assembly. So what that means is that the hydrogen and the oxygen can be reconverted back to water, okay? which means that we don't have quite so much hydrogen in the oxygen. So we have an additional degree of freedom in our electrolyzer design on the PEM that we don't have in alkaline to support the safety. And we can see again people like Gore are innovating the membrane to further bring down the oxygen carryover. So they're thinking about safety in the design of the membrane system and the PEM system. But we still need to measure to make sure that we're less than that 2% level. Just a final comment from me, and then it's back to Torsten. How much does all of this cost? You heard a moment ago from Draeger, he's seeing less than 0.2% of the spend of big projects coming through for safety. Well, this is from a plug power patent in terms of stack, typical stack and electrolyzer costs. Controls and sensors according to plug power, what's that? Four or five percent of the total. If you really want to save money, which of these chunks of the pie are you going to go for? 
stacks, power management, rectifiers, transformers, right? So, I mean, my message to you is please don't compromise on safety. If you're gonna, if the boss tells you to take five or 10% out of the project budget, please, please, please look somewhere else. Please do not compromise on safety. I don't want your lives going the same way of that accident in Ilford.